All right, so in this section, we are going to talk about disaster recovery system for Cisco Unified Communication 12.5 version. Although the process is pretty much same for all the versions, but in my lab environment, I'm using 12.5 uh, version of Cisco Unified Communication Manager. So let's uh, take a quick look at it. Uh, so we have logged into disaster recovery system, if you could notice. Uh, from the navigation options that I have. It's third from the top, which says disaster recovery system. And I logged in with my credential to it. Uh, so it displays the system version and uh, uh, the virtual machine size and so on. Uh, so you would notice primarily there are two options, uh, two, main, two menu options, I would say. One is backup and another is restore. And precisely, this is pretty much it uh, that disaster recovery system really does. So what you do is you take a backup of your existing configuration of Cisco Unified Communication Manager. And whatever you have got at that point of time gets as a backup. And that can be utilized uh, when something wrong happens and you know you are not able to recover your virtual machine, the virtual machine is gone bad, you have to rebuild, right? So at that time, you do not need to worry about the configuration that your system used to have. For instance, you may have 5,000 phones and voicemail set up, trunks, uh, LDAP integrations, and, and many things. Uh, what you used to have in your organization. And you cannot really have the luxury to rebuild in case of, uh, you know, I would say reconfigure in case of a disaster like the server went bad, that there's something which corrupted certain files and you need to rebuild from scratch. You cannot really reconfigure those 5,000 phones with the same configurations, right? Because that's gonna take ages for you to restore it the way it was before. So uh, it's there from a very uh, early version of Cisco called Manager since uh, I have uh, started to work. Uh, I've, I've seen Cisco Unified Communication Manager version three and four. Uh, even at that time, this concept of backup and resource or has always been there. So what you do is you take that current uh, sort of snapshot of your existing configuration and you keep it as a file. And in case of a disaster, you restore them. Okay, so let's uh, explore a bit about the backup uh, menu options that we have. So we see here one, two, three, four, five, five options and I can talk uh, a bit about uh, each of them. So the first one is backup device. So backup device is uh, an option where you basically need to add where do you want to store the configuration file. So it's, it's like a dump server. It's like a TFTP server for your organization. So what you do is you, if you haven't defined it yet, but, uh, or, or maybe your, your organization has asked you to uh, change the backup device so you can add anything uh, new here. So you could say uh, CUCM backup uh, and then put the IP address of uh, the server where you want to install it. Uh, so for instance, I mean, I can uh, try to put the credentials in for my TFTP server. And this is the default way of putting your path, which is a backslash, and then put the username and password. Of course, this is not gonna be that simple in your uh, production environment, but uh, this is just to give you, uh, you know, as, a, as an example here. So you can put your backup device name and uh, the credentials, or, or you can uh, uh, name it anything which makes more sense. For instance, CUCM backup, uh, TFTP uh, or the address location that you have uh, or, or maybe you, you could say San Diego TFTP. Uh, you name it anything, right? As long as it's meaningful to you. And you put in the T 
TFTP configurations uh, down here. There are so many TFTP servers are, uh, are available in the market. Uh, few of them, I mean, I know TFTP 64, TFTP D 32, and, and there are many other options that you can explore. Uh, whatever is recommended by your organization uh, that can be trusted by your organization, you can uh, use that software as a TFTP, uh, you know, TFTP uh, server where you can dump the backup files of your Cisco Unified Communication Manager server. Now, once the backup is done, right, you can uh, take the backup in two different fashion. One is to do the backup as manual, and the other is you can schedule it uh, on certain days or every night uh, when the processing is on a lower side. So you can happily let your call manager work taking the backup and putting down to the backup device that you created. So this way you're automating the configuration files to be backed up, whatever changes have been accommodated throughout the day, or maybe if your backup frequency is twice a week or once a week, you know, that's being dumped out to your backup device. So you come down here to the scheduler and you say, you know what, I, I want to define the schedule uh, on uh, how many dates, uh, what uh, configuration that I really need to take uh, a backup to. So I would say schedule name is, let's say, I want to do it uh, for CUCM call manager uh, on a daily basis, right? So I would say CUCM daily backup. And I, I, I do want to take Unified Communication Manager I do not want uh, call details records. Uh, I do not want I am in presence. Uh, okay, I need self care and PLM. Okay, uh, so I have uh, taken this all. Right, Let, let's include I am in presence as well, for instance. Right, and 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 then you could say uh, yes, you want it on a daily basis, or you can define it on a on a week uh, weekly basis so for instance you 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 know define it maybe the two days could be fridays and sunday uh, or maybe more right uh, whatever your organization agrees about uh, so it's preferable that you do it on a daily basis so at least the configuration changes uh, throughout the last 24 hours will be backed up, right? And then you uh, save it, right? So it says no backup devices uh, configured. Uh, once you have the backup device configured, we'll list out here, and then uh, you can select from the drop down here and uh, do a save. So this way it will automate the process, right? So you do not need to come down every night as an administrator and take a manual backup. But in case something happens to the backup device, for instance, it's full, it does not have enough space and, and the scheduler failed and it happens many other times uh, that the scheduler, although it's scheduled and it's uh, uh, working just fine, but due to network problem or due to no space in the backup device, it failed. So there's also an option for manual backups. So you come down here and uh, you know you select whatever you want to select and then you start taking backup uh, of course you have to have the backup device configured so there would be drop down menu that uh, from there you can choose which device you want this file to be set up uh, and uh, you can go from there uh, the history and current status the history would show what all or how many times the system has uh, taken backup, right? And what all devices, what all uh, configuration files, you know, uh, have been taken care. Uh, and uh, the current status, so would display what's going on uh, at that moment, right? So for instance, you may have the scheduler running the backup and you wanna check what's really happening. Is it really performing the task or not? So you can come down here uh, to current status and it's gonna 
display that it has taken, uh, you know, for instance, 20%, 30%, or 50% of uh, the backup has already been completed, and so on. Now, the next option, what you see here is, you already taken the backup, you already know the history of the backups, if they're successful or not, you, you know that what's the current status and so on. Now, the whole purpose of keeping the backup is in case of emergency, right? We want to uh, restore them uh, at, at the same call manager version. So let's say you, uh, once the call manager publisher, you know, just an instance, uh, failed, crashed, and you, uh, all, all you wanted is to, uh, you know, uh, restore it to the, uh, to the call manager server that you built after the crash. So you built a call manager, but it's blank. It doesn't have any configurations and you instantly want to restore it. So you're gonna go to the restore wizard and select the point, right? uh from from where you want to restore it so the same tftp file the same tftp server you have stored your backup you can select it from the drop down and just say next right and uh, it's going to pick it up from there and uh will take certain time and restore them uh pretty much it and you'll be good to go so the current status again what show display right here uh what, what's the current status and if there have been history of restoration uh, and so on. So this is not something you're gonna use and uh, I really do not wish that you use it quite often, but uh, it's a system, you're an administrator, so you must know how to really do a disaster recovery system. Uh, and uh, uh, you know you can uh, live pretty much it from, from there. All right, so with this, uh, we're gonna close this session for now and uh, would like to see you in the next session. Good luck, thank you.